In my previous video, I demonstrated and discussed 20 important safeties you must know and master. Many people commented on the video via YouTube, Facebook, and AZ Billiards suggesting different shot options. Since there was a lot of good discussion, I thought people might enjoy a follow-up video showing some interesting and useful shot alternatives. Thank you to everybody who suggested some of the ideas. For this shot, I just sent the cue ball in the natural angle direction behind the blockers. A better alternative is to move the 9 and leave the cue ball on the end rail. That was easy to execute, and the stripes are now more in the open with more pockets available. Another option is to send the 9 up table and use spin to try to freeze the cue ball to the 13 or 14. My opponent is very unlikely to get a hit on the 8 from here, and even if he or she does, I am still a favorite to run out. Another option is a two-way shot, attempting to bank the 11 cross side and lead the cue ball under the 9, 13, and 14. If I miss, I force my opponent to kick or jump at the 8. And if I make the bank, I can either play a lock-up safety, or attempt to run out for the win. For this shot, I separated the cue ball in 8, but if my opponent misses the 8 and gives me ball in hand, I don't have an easy out. If I instead hit the 8 a touch fuller with a touch more speed, I still snooker my opponent. And the out is easy if I get ball in hand. For this shot, I did the standard separation safety to opposite sides of the table on the same long rail. An alternative is to try to get the cue ball as close as possible to the 8 and 9 instead. That didn't work out and I almost sold out the game. However, using inside spin and a thinner hit, I can get a much better result. And with this approach, a wide range of hits will give me a good outcome. If you freeze the cue ball to the back side of the 9, you can really put your opponent in a tough spot. And if you are lucky, you might even pocket the 9 for the win. Well, I got lucky. <laughs> For this shot, I thinned the 10 to hide the cue ball up table, but it was a little risky coming that close to the side pocket. Here, I've flipped the ball layout so you can better see the shot alternatives. One option is to use a soft hit to hide the cue ball behind the 11. But this is not a good safety against any decent jumper. If you hit the 11 more full, you can prevent a jump reply, but with a leave like that, or with any gap making the jump tough, my opponent can still do a masse kick. This shot isn't easy, but anytime you leave the cue ball and object ball in the same area of the table, you open yourself up to possible disappointments like this. A better option is to create distance between the cue ball and 8 and try to hide behind the balls up table. The cue ball wasn't at risk of hitting any pocket point or scratching, and even if I didn't hide the cue ball, my opponent would still have a tough look at the 8. Here, I did a controlled draw shot to really tie up my opponent, but this shot requires good touch. Since nothing is blocking the path to the upper corner, the straight back bank on the 7 is a good option. Although here, if I had missed the bank, I would have likely sold out the game. A better play is a two-way bank where you try to hide the cue ball behind the 9 in case the 7 doesn't go. With a miss, my opponent would have been forced to jump or kick at the 7. A safer option is to thin the 7 and leave the cue ball up table. You can create lots of distance, try to leave the cue ball and or 7 close to the rails to make shots more difficult and maybe even hide behind the 8, or the 9.
I hope you enjoyed seeing the alternative options for some of the important safeties you must know and master. Be sure to practice these shots along with all the others in the previous video. They can help you win more. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave. Thank you.